it's Daisy. Welcome back to another episode of Sounds Like a You Problem podcast. Today we're going to get into why you are not lovable. Yeah, this is going to be a rough one. Again, very big sister, tough love kind of advice. But I need you to understand that it's not that you're not lovable, okay? It's that you're having issues presenting yourself. You might have issues with confidence. It's probably a huge contender. And that you don't love yourself or you don't show up in ways that looks like you love yourself. And maybe you lack respect for yourself. And all of this falls back, honestly, to trusting yourself. Learning how to trust yourself will improve all of this. It's the easiest, quickest way to become wanted to become respected, and to do those things for yourself. And to have all of those things from others, you're going to have to do them for yourself. So I do highly recommend, I'll go ahead and put that episode up right here, learning how to trust yourself. I break it down in a very tangible, easy way to apply to your everyday life. So don't feel discouraged or like it's going to be really, really hard because it's not. Does it take time? Yes. But the second you start is the second you get better. Um, I also just want to reiterate that I'm not saying that you're not worthy of being loved. I'm saying that you're not showing your worth, that you're not proving your worth, that you are not putting your worth on display, if for lack of a better term. So you only have control over what you have control over. This is definitely not black and white. There are people that will come into your life that genuinely are not capable of loving you and are not capable of treating anyone the way that they deserve and they need some self-reflection. Like, that's a them problem. Right now we're talking about your you problem, which is the fact that you may not respect yourself. So something I heard in a podcast was someone who is maybe an unhealthy weight or they identify as someone who has an unhealthy weight, like they have body dysmorphia or maybe they really are at an unhealthy weight. It kind of proves to anyone who sees you immediately off the bat that you lack discipline. You probably don't control your diet. You don't eat healthy. You don't research what things you should be putting in your body and what things work better for your health. You probably don't go to the gym. You don't walk or run or have a physical activity or sport. And again, there are, I don't want this to be taken the wrong way, because there are extenuating factors such as diseases, such as, um, obvious genetic disorders and things of that nature, right, that can lead you to look like, you know, to look unhealthy or be unhealthy. But one of the things, the point that I'm trying to get across is like, if you're someone who goes to the gym or takes care of themselves or looks like they're in shape or is in shape or, or is really mindful of the things they're putting in their body and really, really does their best to not only treat themselves, but to have discipline when it comes to what they consume and they're more interested in their health and nurturing their body than they are abusing it or mistreating it, you are immediately going to be respected off the bat. Because nine times out of ten, when someone sees you or meets you for the first time, they are seeing you. They're seeing your image, the image you're presenting. Just like someone who is more presentable when they wear nicer clothes or style their hair or do their makeup. And you don't have to wear makeup to be pretty or look presentable. That is not this. This is not what I'm trying to say. Um, The point that I'm trying to get across is you can tell very much so someone that puts an effort into how they show up for themselves and others in person, then you can see the difference in someone that shows up and they don't want to be there and they may not care about themselves. And this is a lot to do with self-care. The example that I used was like going to the gym versus being an unhealthy weight because I do think that ultimately if you go to the gym, that's the easiest way to get someone to respect you right off the bat. You don't have to tell them you go to the gym. All you have to do is look like you go to the gym and they're going to be like, wow, because it takes so much self-discipline to go to the gym. It takes so much confidence and to be so brave and courageous. And it also takes... uh, being very, um, having a specific regimen, having a specific routine that falls into the way that you eat food, the way you view food, the way you view your body. So if you're someone who is fit and in shape, it automatically off the bat proves that you care about yourself, you take care of yourself, you're self-disciplined, and you um, are able to set goals and reach them. And that is how you can say so much without words. And so if you feel that you're unlovable, unapproachable, that no one ever wants to date you or be with you, there 
this could be a factor. This could be a factor. Whenever someone meets you, this is their perception of you because you do have to, we do have to be realistic here. And one of the very first things that happens when someone might be interested in you and wants to love you ultimately, eventually, is them having a somewhat physical interest in you. That moves on from there. So that's kind of why I'm talking about appearance things. But I don't want this all to be about appearance because, again, there are gray moments. It's not all black and white here. There are people out there that are just absolute pieces of trash. Garbage. And if you don't know what garbage is, it's French for trash. Um, <laughs> so you're not unlovable. You have got to understand that by learning all of these things, by taking care of yourself and by showing that you respect yourself, by setting boundaries, by being kind, by being a good listener, but also having good advice to give, people are going to be more inclined. They're going to be more inclined to want to talk to you, to want to be around you. And so it might not be that you're unlovable because by default, you might actually be making yourself that way. You might actually be you know, almost like warding people off or being unapproachable because of what you're putting out there. And if that is your MO, like if that is your goal and that's what you're reaching and hoping to, you know, achieve, then I don't even know why you're listening to this video because you did it successfully. You don't need to be listening to this video. Um, but this is for the, the opposite, the opposite of those, those people. And a lot of being lovable is about doing some inner work and really looking at yourself. It's not always someone else either. Like I mentioned, there are those crappy people out there, but it could also be you. Like what vibe are you giving off? Do you respect yourself? Do you trust yourself? Do you love yourself? Like, do you genuinely love yourself? And I hate the cliche or I hate when people just like touch the surface of this subject and they are like, well, if you don't love yourself, then no one will. Okay, well, teach me ways to love myself. Well, teach me ways to recognize if I don't love myself. Teach me how I can start to learn how to love myself, right? And that's kind of what I want to do for you guys. I want this to be attainable. I don't want to just say a cliche and hope that you get it and hope that it sticks. That's not helpful. And I actually didn't know that I didn't love myself because um, I've kind of struggled with vanity on and off in my life. I am not struggling with that anymore. I can say thankfully because I don't want to be someone who is vain. But uh, growing up, how I did. It's kind of hard if you're told your whole life that all you are is beautiful or you're told your whole life all you are is fat or you're told your whole life that all you are is smart. You're gonna eventually identify with that and that's gonna become your identity. But something that I want to let you know is that you get to write your story. It is never too late to change your identity and you have to do that for yourself. So as a child, other people's comments and perception of us can definitely shape the way that we look because that ends up becoming our inner dialogue. But you can do work to change your inner dialogue and see how you present yourself. Um, how, I'm sorry, to change how you perceive yourself is what was what I'm trying to say. And I did that. Like I only ever perceived myself as someone who came from a really rough childhood, who was never going to make it big and was always going to be in poverty and struggle and just work and work as many jobs as they could to get by all the time. I never really seen a future where I was happy or thriving or had more money than I did at the time that I was thinking these things or wasn't depressed or hopeless or didn't want it to just all end, honestly. And I, I can relate to you if that's how you're feeling, but I want you to know that every single thing is temporary, which sucks because that means that the good things are. But what's also nice about that is that it's kind of relieving to know that that feeling is temporary. Life is all about ups and downs. It is a roller coaster, my friend, and I have said that many times times because it's the truth. It is the truth. And once you recognize that it's about ups and downs, then you can recognize very easily ways to combat those downs and ways to really make sure you're soaking in those ups. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like once you truly believe that it is all about ups and downs and it's never going to be 100% amazing and it's never going to be 100% awful, you're able to navigate the ups and downs a lot smoother and it makes for a much smoother, more enjoyable ride in this ride we call life. Um, you're not unlovable. You're not not worthy. The thing is, is that you are, are omitting what you really feel about yourself inside. You are, you know, em emulating this, this 
narrative that you have created for yourself or that someone has created for you that you haven't learned how to redirect. So some of my best tips on how to redirect is to change your mindset. If you need a more in-depth episode for easy attainable ways to change your mindset, it's always about starting small, but I do have an entire episode on that. Go check it out. I'll make sure that I put it on the screen and link it in the description so you guys can find it. Another way is to take care of yourself. Self-care is the easiest way to start proving to yourself easily and like subconsciously that you love yourself. And I'm smiling while saying this because it's I, I didn't realize that was going to be a benefit of it. So creating little routines and habits to take care of yourself or doing things that bring you joy um, is a, an amazing way to subconsciously start to make yourself realize you're taking care of yourself, you show up for yourself, you rely on yourself, and that you put time, effort, and energy into yourself. So this is hard for a lot of people pleasers because they don't often pay attention to themselves. If you want to learn ways and the best way to practice self-care that is very unconventional, listen to my self-care episode. It is all about finding what brings you joy and I break it down on how you can find what brings you joy and then practicing that and experimenting with that. So taking care of yourself. Another way to emulate this is by respecting yourself. The only way you respect yourself is if you set boundaries and you learn how to say no. Learning to say no is a superpower. It is so hard to learn. I get it, especially if you're a people pleaser or an ex-people pleaser or whatever it may be. Um, especially if you grew up in an emotionally unavailable home, you constantly feel like you're responsible for other people's emotions. If you constantly had to walk on eggshells because your parents could not control their emotions or regulate their emotions, you never learned how to regulate yours and you constantly are feeling like you are the cause of anyone else's emotional emotional irregulation. And that's just not fair. That's not true. And we've got to learn how to get out of that. So I have an episode called You Don't Get to Pick Your Parents. And I do think that that would be helpful to listen to to kind of get the gears turning on how you might be able to not identify with that anymore and how you might be able to heal from growing up in an emotionally unavailable home, which if you did, my heart goes out to you. I did as well. And it is challenging. And that's a lot of times why I'm doing all the work that I'm doing and why I made this podcast, okay? I didn't have anyone telling me this when I was younger. I don't have anyone telling me this now. I'm telling you it because I'm figuring it out and I think that we should all have access to this information. I am I often refer to myself as the big sister because I am a big sister and I don't have a big sister and my mom was not a very motherly presence in my life. So I had to figure out how to do all this on my own and I just want to help others. I just want it to be easier for you guys. I, I, want it, I want it to all be in one little space to help you to feel lovable, help you to feel worthy. I want it to be easy because not all of this stuff is hard and I don't want it to be vague because when people say vague things, it's like, well, yeah, but you're not actually helping me understand how to do this and that's what I want to do for you guys. So if this episode helped you do that, I just let me know because I'm hoping that I'm conveying it in a way that you can pick up on and apply to your everyday life. But there are a lot of things. You need to respect yourself, learn how to set boundaries. You need to care for yourself. It's going to prove to yourself you can rely on yourself and that you do love yourself subconsciously. Find things that bring you joy. A lot of the episodes, again, I think this is episode... 15 or 16, a lot of my episodes prior really break each of these things down and go super, super in depth. So if you're struggling with any of those things, whether it be self-care, shame and regret, your parents making such a negative impact on the way that you view yourself, um, why you feel like you're never enough and how to trust yourself, I have episodes going in depth on all of those every single one of them. So go check it out. I promise they're not very long episodes and you can listen to me on like 1.5x speed or or faster if you can digest the information. That's how I that's how I consume content because I want to consume as much as I can. I just want to be the best version of myself and I want to help you guys do that too. So if you enjoy this episode or you feel like my message got across, I'm really hoping it did in the way that I'm wanting it to. Give me a five-star rating on Spotify. It brings so much happiness to my day. And if you're on YouTube, please subscribe and stick around for more. I'm really excited to create this community with you guys. Let me know in the comments if you have any other advice on how to feel and exude like you love yourself so that you can attract others that love and respect you. And I will see you guys all in the next episode of Sounds Like a You Problem podcast.